All right, we're going to find the centroid or the center of mass of a region lying between the graphs of these two functions on the interval from x equals 0 to pi over 4. And I wrote down a bunch of equations for you. Ultimately, the x-coordinate is given by this right here and the y-coordinate right here. Of course, to find m, m sub x, and m sub y, we need to use these integrals down here. One little tip right off the bat, if we're trying to find a centroid and we're not given any specific density, then we can just assume that the density is constant. And because this density is going to cancel out of all these calculations, we can just call the density 1. Now to start this problem, I'm going to do a really quick sketch. The cosine of x function and the sine of x function cross each other at x equals pi over 4. So you can see that the region that we're talking about is this one right here. The main thing to take from this drawing is the fact that 7 cosine of x is the top function and 7 sine of x is the bottom function. So we're going to call this one f of x and this one g of x. All right, we may as well start with the mass integral. We're going to integrate 7 cosine of x minus 7 sine of x from 0 to pi over 4. It might help you to pull the 7 out of the integral. We can just factor it right out. The integral of cosine is positive sine. The integral of sine is negative cosine. We can then plug our upper and lower limits of integration into this result. And using our knowledge of the unit circle, and maybe just one little step of simplification, we have two like terms here, and they can be combined just like that. Okay, I think that next up is going to be m sub y. Plugging f of x and g of x into that formula gives us the following integral. I'm going to take a factor of 7 out of it, and I'm also going to distribute the x through the parentheses. And what we have here are two integrals that require integration by parts. This is a technique that I'm actually going to talk about in the next set of videos. So you can take a look at that playlist when it comes out. The integration by parts formula looks just like this. So essentially from this integral we have to choose a u and a dv. And you know what? I think it's going to be a little bit easier if we do actually take this x and this x and factor it back out. So I'm going to do that really quickly. And typically when we're integrating by parts we want to choose a u that will simplify with differentiation. In this example our u can be chosen as x, and that does simplify when we take a derivative. In this integral, we also have to choose a dv. Well, dv is just going to be everything else, and everything else in this integral is cosine of x minus sine of x dx. If we choose that for our dv, then we can integrate to get our v, and if we integrate cosine, we get sine, and if we integrate sine, we get negative cosine. Taking what we got for our u, our v, and our du, and plugging them back into this formula for integration by parts is going to give us that this integral turns into the following. Okay. Okay, we can then complete this little integral right here. I'll leave everything else the same. The integral of sine is negative cosine, so that's going to give us a positive cosine of x. And the integral of cosine is positive sine, but this negative is going to make that term a minus sine of x. Okay, then we can remember that this was actually a definite integral, so we had limits on this thing all along. We can evaluate this integral from 0 to pi over 4 to get this really long line right here. And we can simplify using our unit circle. Then combining our like terms is going to give us our result. Maybe we can simplify that just a little bit. I don't know, maybe this looks a little bit better right here. But that's going to be our answer for m sub y. Our m sub x is going to be next and going all the way back here to recall the formula. I'm just going to scroll down and copy that thing. I just plugged f and g into that formula. We can square both of those functions, and we can pull the 49 outside of the integral. Now you'll notice that cosine squared minus sine squared can be rewritten with this double angle identity, and this is going to be really convenient for us. But as a side note, it is very common if given a cosine squared or a sine squared to integrate, that we're going to use one of these two double angle identities right here. You'll use those identities a lot in the future, but again, for this problem, we are just going to replace cosine squared minus sine squared with cosine of 2x. What's great about this is that this is actually pretty easy to integrate. The integral of cosine of 2x is 1 half sine of 2x. What we just did to integrate cosine of 2x was technically a u substitution. We did u was 2x, that would make du 2dx, and solving for dx would bring this 1 half out in front of the integral. But okay, back to the main problem. We can combine fractions, and we can plug in our upper and lower limits of integration. Simplifying just a little bit, we recognize that 2 times pi over 4 is just pi over 2. 2 times 0 is, of course, 0, and sine of pi over 2 is just 1, so our result for this piece, this m sub x, is 49 fourths. And finally, we have all of the pieces that we need to calculate the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of our center of mass. Notice that way back at the beginning, we had that the x-coordinate of the center of mass was going to be m sub y over m. We just calculated m sub y to be 7 times the square root of 2 times pi over 4 minus 1, and we calculated m to be 7 times the square root of 2 minus 1. Now it might look like some things are going to cancel here, but really the only thing that can cancel is the 7. So that is going to be the final answer for the x value of our center of math. If I plug that into a calculator, it's approximately 0.267. And I think that that makes sense given the 
region that we've drawn up here. As far as the y-coordinate of our center of mass, uh, perhaps we could simplify that. The 49 divided by 7 would leave a 7 in the numerator. This 4 here would end up in the denominator. But plugging that into a calculator is going to give us approximately 4.22. And again, I think a sanity check says that that probably makes sense because of the picture of the region that we drew all the way back here. Okay, that was another really long one. So I think what I'm going to do is zoom in on this just a little bit. And I'm going to scroll through the problem so you can take another look at the math and feel free to hit pause in your browser whenever it's convenient for you. Okay, I hope that that helped.